Hello and welcome to the treasured page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. Oh, right. What a lovely few days I've had. I've been absolutely crazy busy. And now I'm very pleased to sit down, slow down and relax with the coffee pot challenge. I'm going to pull out three cards from the pot. Give them a shake. I'm not going to look. I don't want to know what they are. And let's see. Ah, so today we've got ink effect. Rubber stamp and scraps. Okay. Excellent. Right. Oh, that's nice. Finding little pieces. Wild honey, that sounds nice. Let's have a bit of wild honey. It's nice to be surrounded by the kits. I know that, uh, you know, that's not what everybody has, but over time, over. Oh, ooh. There we are. My system is sort of working and then sort of not. I don't know where that yellow pad went. Right. Anyway, these are the ink blending tools. They're very, very good. I keep one on hand, which is my grunge one that I'm using for all black and brown colours just to give me a dark edge. And I can't remember when I changed it. It was about, I don't know, maybe three or four months ago. And it is starting to do that. Uh, you know, that's sort of starting to get a bit unacceptable now. That's the foam dobber. And look, it's also come apart there. But it has been used every single day. I have put it under a lot of stress and I ink round a lot of edges. Um, so I'm saying that that is a fair, fair use, fair usage. I think we might... Um, change that over and for the if I can find another applicator I shall change it over because you can I think you get um I think you get 10 in the pack something like that so I'm bringing in this bright honey color here um having a go at just doing a, like a blended blotchy effect like that and what was this this was an old vintage checkbook um, piece of paper from a very old well, from the 80s uh, so it was a nice paper it's quite absorbent it's taken on the ink and it has sort of a nice waxed effect to it almost perhaps because it's an aged paper whereas this is a bought paper and it's sort of a parchment effect so let's have a look at the difference in this is more like a this is like a smart piece of paper that you would print onto if you were printing out a certificate for somebody sort of thing that uh, you, you might buy for the school you know somebody's won something and you want to print it out that sort of paper posh paper I don't know if you can see but it's got a nice sort of mottled effect it is a mock parchment paper then I'm going to take the tissue I'm going to spray both of them and I'm going to pull off oh where are you going pull off some ink Starting to be a subtle effect there. What else do we want to do? Let's bring in another yellow and be super yellow. And we'll do it this way. Supersonic yellow now. And we're just putting the colour onto the paper. I always find this is quite a nice, quick, easy way to do it, just to get that on there. So do have a look out for packaging where you've got a nice flat surface because I think this was originally some the top of a box that slid on and uh, was you could see through and um, 
you can get those occasionally it's just you start looking at your rubbish and your packaging in a very different way when you start this sort of craft yeah I'm just going to put pick up that last bit of ink there on this um, envelope that I've just cut I've cut off the stamp marketing bit so it's just plain and I've opened it out so I've cut the top and the bottom off but you can see that's an envelope it's an old bill an old phone bill I think so we'll just sort of did you see I could wipe away the ink from that bit there and I might also just do that and pick up pools of ink on places where we don't really need them and then that will slowly build up without me thinking about it and, uh, I think that's a lovely backdrop now and I think what might be quite nice is a very gentle because we've got that nice honey color and we put the fossilized amber on both one is, you know, you see the difference and um, it's subtle on there, but it is, it is still present. This is Rusty Hinge, which is exactly the colour that it suggests it is. It is rust. And um, there we go. Can you see that? Bright orange. And I'm just mixing that over a bit more. And I'm going to loosely put that on, move it about a bit just for an interest, let it puddle and pool over there. Same here. Okay. and then pick up that colour. Get the heat gun and just dry that now and I shall turn off the sound. Okay, look what we have here. Two very different types of paper and two very different effects. So your paper is going to affect your colour, intensity and how the ink behaves on on the substrate on the paper that you use. Okay, so we've got this now. These are nice and dried. Just to recap, we've used three colors. We've used wild honey, fossilized amber, and a rusty hinge. They're all in the same colorway. They're warm tones, they're yellows, they're oranges. And um, we could possibly have got away with just using a fossilized amber to create that depth of color and then perhaps brought in um, a brown like a vintage photo so if you're just starting out what I would suggest you do is you buy one of the mini kits which just has the browns in it I think it comes I think you get two browns an antique linen and a black I have used those over and over and over again I've had them for three years these are the same inks they're exactly the same and when anything threatens to get a little bit dull um, I just do that squirt a little bit of water on the top and we are back in business because they're water reactive inks and the ink stays there I haven't used the reinker. I haven't had to buy, oh, only for the black, because I use the black a lot. So I did buy a reinker and added that to it. Um, so you can do that, and then you keep your little pads like that, and they come in the tins. I've found that that's worked for me, but then I am three years into using these inks. Um, no problems at all. I love them because they're water reactive. Um, and that is why we've been able to create the effects here. Okay, so we've got two yellow cards here and this is the bit that we're also dabbing about what if we want to do one in a more happy mood but one in a more grunge now grunge is something that um, we all sort of we love it's interesting and it's quite hard to develop it but um, with a few techniques you can achieve a really really cool look so let's let's just play with that idea and 
I've got this stamp with the flower, right? So flowers all happy and lovely. Let's have a lovely happy flower stamp on there. And let's use a black so we get a good impression. I'm using an archival ink and that means it is a waterproof ink. So if I'm, if I'm putting water onto it, it isn't going to budge. It's an oil-based ink, which gives a nice imprint over a water one, which can bead up on the stamps sometimes. So I'm just going to put that in the middle of, of this piece on it. There we go. OK, so that's that one. Then this one, I thought we would take it into a more of a vintage. Now, when I say vintage, vintage is anything between 40 and 100 years ago. So 40 years ago is going to take me back to the 80s. And then after that, you know, that's not that old. So you're really, if you're wanting to do anything Victoriana-ish-esque, you're really looking for antique antiquing so that's nice let's put that to one side for a moment focus on this oh I'm just gonna have a little stretch you should do that roll your shoulders have coffee or a glass of water coffee pot challenge remember so stay hydrated now we've got the grungy the grungy ones in here are going to be the browns aren't they and also the weathered wood. So what you do when you've got something you want to grunge up, what I do anyway, is go for the lighter colour first and build up from there. So I'm going to put in oops, weathered wood, which is a grey, um, and then stormy sky, which is also a bluey grey, sort of miserable rainy day colour perfect for the UK so let's go back to Victorian times British grunge proper filth dirt and uh, take this yellow sunny yellow to a much more sinister place and with that we spray the plastic, lay down the piece of paper, smooth it out, lift it up, check it, go down again. What's happened? The blue tones have reacted with the yellow tones and created a green. Okay, I, what I don't want for this, I don't want green spots. So I'm just trying to smooth out the green spots. Okay, all right. That is just good colour knowledge. Your yellow and your blue makes green. Okay, we can all remember that from school. So far, so good. Now, bringing in a brown, I'm going to go for my lighter tone here. Well, I say it's lighter, I'm not really sure. Let's have a look. This one, there's not much going on there. Let's zap it with some water. There we go. So we've got a frayed burlap we have what's this one gathered twigs that's a dark isn't it uh, walnut stain that's a lovely rich brown but dark and um, vintage photo oops over here very similar. Walnut stain and vintage photo have a warmth to them. 
That one doesn't. Frayed burlap I'm going to use because it's the paler of the four. It's also sort of got a yellow tone in there. These would be big contrasts. So that's an interesting palette effect you can do down there. What am I doing here? Right, I want this back. I've got a bit of ink there, so we'll just get rid of that on my stamping off envelope that's going to become something in the future. Uh, put the ink down, push and twist, spritz of water, and then run your finger like that. That just loosens up the tiny beads. This is quite soggy. It, it would be best to dry in between, but I want the water to disperse the ink. I don't really want the droplets. So I'm working with damp paper. Okay, lightly just pressing it down. And if we turn it over, we can see what's happening. Okay, and then we peel that up and you can let that run down, that ink. And then the yellow has reacted again with the brown, creating a real grunge effect. So now to stop that reacting quite so much, we need to dry it. Okay, very different. Now, it's a slow build-up of colour. There is not really anything quick about this. It is a process, and that's why some of these grunge tags take their time, but they do look amazing when you finish. I'm now going to use Walnut Stain. Now, we saw that that was there. That's that warm but very rich and very dark colour. And we go again with our water ink mixture and this time we're just going to do that lightly okay so this is spl splats splatting it down like a oh someone spilled their coffee lift up some of the ink here using the spare bit I can pick it up now because I know those drops aren't going to flick everywhere, they are just going to stay. So I can now just sort of do a very gentle light pressure, not squashing it down too much. And then I can almost position where I want those little spots which act as age spots. Okay, a fragment in time would not have a straight edge, so we tear it. These are useful scraps. Vintage photo. Water. and treat the edges to the ink mixture. Okay. You can go around with a blending tool as well when it's dry, but this way it gets sucked right up into the fibre of the paper and you get a much more interesting fluffy effect where you are not breaking it down with the friction from the blending tool there. Anything that's going on that uh, window can be wiped. All right, we'll just have a look at what this looks like dry. All right, I've got this script stamp. It's 
uh, very, very small, very fine. I'm going to use a water-based ink. This is black soot. I'm just going to rub that over the top. I'm going to just lay that down like that. Okay, very cool. Something at the top. All right, so it's an old scrap of newspaper now. <coughs> um, just using this, what's left on the stamp there, putting that down. And... Uh, Again, it doesn't matter if it goes on the plastic because it can be wiped off because this one is a water-based. Right. So there we are, that's really cool. It's smudged because it's water-reactive and that was wet. It's done the same there. But it didn't do it here because that was a oil-based and it is fixed and therefore that is where we're going with those. So there's my... Stamps are my ink effects. You can see the difference. See the different types there. Um, I think what to get this one how we want it, we're going to have to dry it again. Um, so a spritz of water from any water spray bottle that you have will be fine. If you'd like to take part in my giveaway on my other uh, yesterday's video, um, I am giving away two of these water bottles. So for a chance to win one of those you need to go to the other video and uh, make sure, first of all, you, you subscribe to the channel and then secondly, just leave a message that you would like to take part in the giveaway. And I'm announcing it on Friday next week, so we've got a week to uh, enter the prize draw. I'll leave a link below on this video to the video that you need to go to. Oh, lovely coffee today. And then that will give you the option to win one of those and there's other prizes as well and I think I need to think up a an extra prize because we've been offered 25% uh, off of Antonio Makes digital kits um, for this week for the treasured page so I'm going to leave a link to that below because he's got all these butterflies and it's absolutely fantastic so um to just if you haven't seen my celebration yesterday <laughs> crazy butterflies all these beautiful the dark blue butterflies that you see here they were from um, his digital kit so that's um, Antonio makes and he has his own website channel as well has his own website and his own YouTube channel as well Tear this out and that beautiful colour has seeped into the paper now. So I've actually got the ink is sort of coming through. Right, I've got my yellow ink here. That has now dried out, sat there. So I just squirt it again to reactivate the ink. Don't use extra when you've already got it. And you just use the ink that's already on the sponge there so that is how we sort that out okay so now we have these parts we could do something very cool here by just adding those you could, you could. what else could you do you could reach into your scraps of other papers that you may have Um, I'm going to use this. This is a digital kit that I've been working with and I obviously forgot that because I've seen that fantastic stamp there and I think that would be quite cool. So this is from Rach and Bella Crafts. That's their digital kit that's 40% uh, off at the moment and uh, that was a collaboration piece that we were doing. Hang on, how big do I want this? And we just cut off what sticks out. Um, that is... Summer celebr uh, what is it? Summer um, summer bloom celebration. That's right. 
So 40% off of that at the moment and 25% off of the other one, which is lots of ephemera kits and things. That's 25% off everything in Antonio Makes uh, catalog. And that is um, something I will link below. So that was just special to treasured page subscribers. I'm just going to turn that up because I had enough glue on there to just stick that. I'm, I'm going to cover over some of that window with this so I'm just going to stick that down. Not worry about it too much because I really just want to be able to see the stamp inside as a, as a bit of an interest there and this can come over. I'm going to add in my yellow flower paper. Okay, and I'm just having a look at what else I've got here to decorate. A little bit of French script digital kit there, again from the same kit as the inside. Put that down. And this is um, scrap left over from Junk Journal July. And then I'm going to put that there. Uh, old music paper going down. Lovely. Tear that bit off the top. So this is the top of a Jane Austen book, Jane Austen novel, not a really old one, one that just got caught in the sun, just something from uh, the, you know, a, a paperback, nothing important, nothing vintage or special, but I don't really want to cover that up, so I'm just going to tear that bit away, and then I'll put this bit up here. So you can put the rubber stamp on top of the book page which looks absolutely brilliant so that's another thing that you can do trim off your excess get your book page in your journal so you get your plain brown background maybe some old packaging and uh, put that inside and that would look much more interesting on a page like that and then all we want now is just something else that's just going to tie it all in and that you can say that that's done so we just need a focal point which that is the focal point so you can get away with it but I think I want something else and that is absolutely fine as a real grunge bit in your journal with the ink effects and the stamps I think that shows off how to do it how to turn something from either a sunny happy place to a more grunge more uh, back in time historical place where uh, you know the newspaper's been kicked around in the alleyway and it's got grime on it and grot and it's just gone somewhere where you know you just wouldn't take your children <laughs> and then if you've got some tatty bits that uh, could be fabric like that that just adds in some texture as well to the project and I think if we can break it which we can this is silk silk scarf that went through the washing machine uh and, and fell to pieces and uh, that it wasn't exactly the intention it was a happy accident because I'm now using it 
for fun grunge crafts and bohemian style as well and when you go to these places like a goodwill thrift store charity shop jumble sale church fate any of the above um you often find that people have scarves and if you can find vintage ones that are made of silk or a rayon or something uh you'll find that you too could have some rags to play with for your you know this is french so perhaps we're in perhaps we're in uh, paris and it's you know all quite grimy there at the moment because they're building the eiffel tower or something because uh, that that suggests newsworthy ancient something or other and then you can put some nice papers in there and give it a little booklet or you can put um, a writing space that maybe flips up and you've still got a cool background uh, you may want to put another image there that's more interesting that gives you more of a focal point there maybe some flowers uh, we did have a quick brief look at what a flower would look like in there it's possible it's I, I think it doesn't want a flower I think it wants something a bit weird like this do you know what I mean? Something a little bit more offbeat and uh, eclectic. So there we are. That's um, that's got to go there, hasn't it? That's um, Louise Heinzel um, and her parrot kit that has been floating around the desk this week and just hasn't had it home. And now I think it will. So I'll just um, fussy cut this bit out at the bottom without sort of making too much of an effort of it. I'm just going to cut that gnarly bit of twig off, even though that was really cool. Um, just for ease we will we don't necessarily need it and that bit in there where's the where's the we'll just take that little white bit there out with a daub of ink and glue this down so it would look fun there as well so I just want to make sure I get the head of the parrot centered in that stamp look oh I love it I love it when it all fits together there we go, that's a lot of different people's kits that I've been working with this week. We've got Rachel and Bella Crafts, Line Dot Arrow, we've got, uh, who, who are in collab collaboration with the same digital kit that is the Summer Bloom that you can see here, I keep seeing this on my desk. Uh, we've got Louise Heinzel's Parrot and then Tim Holt's stamp there. And that is the stamp and the ink effect and the scrap. So there we are. That's a how to do a little grunge number and uh, just play around with your ink. OK, guys, so there we go. That's it. And I hope you found fun and value here. Do please like and subscribe to the channel. And I will be here again on Sunday with more fun, interesting things for you to look at. So above all else, guys, just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye bye now.